thanks. Um, so I guess uh, this is my talk about uh, implementing slope physics and stuff like that in a platformer in Unity. Um, yeah. Uh, so about me, my Twitter is Crystal Coconut. Um, I'm a game developer slash game designer. Um, yeah, so I'm working on this uh, Game Boy style platformer, um, which has like pixel perfect collision. Uh, I guess I could share that. Oh no, I better not do that. Um, cool. Um, so that this talk is about slopes, so I'm going to talk about slopes. So uh, the slope was invented by O'Brien, and you can see the first slope at O'Brien Auto Glass in. 1844. Um, that's the one joke of the talk. Um, <laughs> so basically how slopes usually work in um, conventional platformers is that they um, you get the tangent to the slope and you make the player move um, parallel to the slope. Um, and this isn't how all platforms work at all, um, or not quite. So uh, in this example, there's no clear actual tangent because they're, the pi pixels are actually staggered like a staircase. Um, and this sucks. Um, it's hard to actually figure out what the angle is from just the um, raw art. So you have to have a different approach. Um, so what I first thought was, how did other people solve this? Um, and Yuji Naka, uh, figured that out way before me. So this is a GIF from, uh, the Sonic Retro, uh, wiki page for how solid tiles work in Sonic. And it basically uses these, um, sensors, which are basically ray casts to check the floor collision um, and put Sonic in the correct place. And I kind of just read how that worked and implemented it. And there was some of the things that I had to do to make it work very well with Unity. Um, but they're, they're basically ray casts that are attached to a fixed point on the player and going in a fixed direction. Um, so, The way everything, all the enemies and all the um, the player character works and all the platforms work in my game is it uses this thing called an actor. Um, so it inherits this actor class and it basically goes through and um, every actor has their own input. So... Um, you can tell it to move left or right. So you can, I made it so that it would be flexible. So you could um, pre-record uh, inputs so that they could be played back, I guess, uh, sequentially, but that might be a bit difficult based on the physics engine in Unity being non-deterministic. Um, but anyway, that's the way that I decided to implement it. Um, so it goes through, these few different stages. So firstly, it updates the sensors. Um, as you can like see in this diagram, I better put the pointer up. As you can see here, these are the sensors coming out of the player. So um, firstly, it checks these sensors against the collisions in the tile map and other actors. Um, and then it uses that information in side check, uh, checking either side. Then it goes into ground check where it checks whether you're standing on the ground and where the player is supposed to be. And then there's the ceiling check, which pushes you off the ceiling if you move too far um, into the ceiling. And then finally, um, calculate movement, which is for um, handling the velocity and acceleration of the player and, and actually applying that to the position at the end. 
So this just basically goes through the impl my implementation of a sensor. Um, the actor calls the all the sensors in the update um, sensors function, and it just does a physics two D raycast in that in the position that it's placed, and then in the direction, um, and it goes one divided by sixteen times the distance because the every pixel in the game is um, the pixels per unit of the game is sixteen. So for every every tile, there's sixteen pixels horizontally and vertically. Um, and then yeah, it just checks where it was hit and whether it was hit, and that information is used later um, in the side check, which is where it checks either side of whether or not the, hang on, I've lost my slide notes. It checks the side check. So basically there's two pairs of side checkers uh, because the character, this character in particular is two um, units tall, but most of the other, um, the other actors are one unit tall. Um, it checks either side above and below for upper and lower blocks um, so that you don't clip through walls. Um, so basically what it does is it checks if you're grounded and if you hit a wall. And if you do, then it pushes the, uh, the actor back from the wall um, and it sets the X position to the uh, the point that the raycast hit at, um, and then moves it back by how long the actual sensor is. So that effectively pushes it away from the wall. And then it also does stuff like sets the ground speed to zero and the air speed to zero. And this is just doing it for the left and the right wall. Hopefully that's self-explanatory. Um, Yep. The next one is the floor check. So it checks either uh, the left and the right side. So the zeroth one is the left side and the oneth uh, floor checker is the right side. Um, it basically checks the two sides and it, the one with the lower distance um, is basically taken which to pop the player out of the floor with. So that's what that's doing here, where it's setting the position of the player, the Y position of the player to the um, pixel height. That should say half pixel height, but anyway, um, it pushes it up by half the pixel height from the floor. And it does the same thing here. Um, and then also it sets the Y velocity to zero so you don't fall through the floor, of course, and sets it to grounded. Um, it also extends lower into the ground than it actually goes um, so that if you, if you have a slope that is um, overhanging off something, then the actual... Uh, the sensor can actually pick it up uh, so that you, it doesn't enter the falling state first and then pick up the slope. And it also helps for if, um, I lost my train of thought, sorry. Um, so this is kind of a screenshot of how it looks in the game. Um, you can see the, um, the two side colliders and this is the, um, the two ground ones. Uh, it's kind of hacky and bad, but basically every single um, pixel is its own collider, so it's its own scriptable object in the tile map, in a separate tile map. Um, it doesn't use as much memory as I thought it would, but it actually, it seems to work, so that's fine. Uh, I've lost my notes. Oh. Sorry. 
uh, and I have no regrets, and I'm not taking feedback on that. <laughs> um, ceiling check uh, basically checks whether or not you're hitting the ceiling. Uh, it's pretty similar to the side check and the um, the floor check. So, but this also checks whether or not um, there's one way tiles so that you can go through them. Um, this is, uh, it checks whether it's in the falling state and it pushes it away from the end point by a set amount when it hits something. And it also sets the um, falling speed to zero because it's hit the top of the wall. Um, the final stage of the actor is that it calculates the movement. So it takes the, um, the velocity and the acceleration that was put into the game logic and actually applies it to the final position that it wants to be put in the game. So um, here's that happening here where it takes the acceleration and um, sets that to the gravity and the X acceleration, and then the velocity is added to it. And uh, this is special code for the aerial drift. And this is special code for the ground speed um, for setting the velocity. And this, this here is just for um, whether or not you have an actor that's on the top of another actor, which I'm going to cover later. And then this is this final step here is the most important, I guess. It checks, uh, it applies the velocity to the final position. Um, so how all of it works, I guess, is I have an actor scheduler, which sequentially runs through all of the, hang on, my slides. No, that's out of sync, hang on. Okay, I'm sorry, I'm having technical difficulties. One second. Okay. Uh, basically, it uh, takes all of the actors, and every single actor has their own actor index, um, and then it orders them uh, by from lowest to highest actor index, and it runs the simulate uh, stuff for each actor sequentially. Um, so that's what's happening here, and it does that every frame. Um, and this allows me to stop some of the problems that I have with um, Unity. Uh, Unity's order of execution, um, which can stop things like having moving platforms behave correctly underneath players and stuff. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's what that allows. Um, conclusion, slopes are bad, don't do them. Um, but this is how to do them if you want to do them. Um, yeah, sorry if this is very short. Uh, we can go to Q&A. Also, before we do that, there are some resources that you should check out. There is a... Um, there is a website about um, how McKids was made, which has it's an NES game that uses a similar approach. And then I'd also say to check out the um, GDC talk by the people that made Inside, um, which gave me the idea of how to do the um, the actor uh, having one fixed update for uh, running multiple actors from that. Um, and also the Sonic Solid Tiles uh, wiki page. Uh, yeah, questions? Awesome. Thanks for the talk, Crystal. Uh, <laughs> first question is from Glider. What is the main reason for every pixel is its no, own actor? Uh, Are you uh, planning to have slopes change or? 
So not every pixel is an actor. Um, every okay. pixel is a tile and a tile map. So every technically every pixel is a scriptable object, and that's generated from the um, the uh, image data from the tiles. Right, right, and, and that will help calculate perfectly what's happening on any variable amount of slope. Yeah, so I can just make any sort of um, tile in Asprite and then put that in, and then it will generate the um, those pixel tiles into there. And it doesn't actually have enough of a performance or a um, memory impact for me to worry about right now. Yeah, amazing. Uh, another question from Anna. Knowing what you know now, would you approach slopes differently doing it again? Um, probably, I probably would not make a uh, pixel-based platformer, um, knowing what I know now. <laughs> that was kind of what I said in the conclusion. Um, I guess, yeah, it just was a lot of work and I wanted to... I think it would have been better spent actually working on the uh, mechanics in the game. But it did turn out, I think it did turn out well, um, mm. but I probably could have implemented it with a simple um, axis aligned bounding box instead um, and then not use slopes and not had to worry about that. Well, on that point, have you got any cool mechanics coming up that use the slopes? Um, so I, I'm trying to, uh, I've tried a few times to write it so that you can, um, if there's a very steep slope, when you run up it, um, it gets harder and harder to run up and, and then you eventually slide down the slope. Um, and then having very steep slopes that when you, you are facing down it, you slide down it kind of like Mario 64, I guess. I love that. Yeah. I love I love a good slope slide in a game. Like, <laughs> it's so fun. Yeah. Uh, I think we've got one more typing. I'll just wait on that last question. <laughs> so. uh, okay, Glider is asking again, another non-unity approach to tiles is using a 2D array for colliders. Uh, do you find that Unity's built-in box 2D makes it easier or more challenging than writing your own AABB? Um, yeah, the inbuilt A um, colliders is pretty good, but I, I guess you have to use. Um, I, I am actually using those colliders still for interactor collisions. Um, uh, but yeah, I didn't find it suited my needs for like um, actually going down slopes, I guess, and up slopes. Um, it mm -hmm. wasn't able to detect them, and uh, I didn't have as much control over the velocity and the momentum of the character through um, the rigid body stuff. Is there anything I missed in that question? And getting that? No, I mean that's right. And you know, like getting that feel just right to get mm. hit that slope. You know, it's really important. Um, yeah, and I think we're out of uh, out of questions. Are there uh, any shout outs or uh, or, or uh, where can we find you online? Any wrap up comments you'd like to have? Uh, just look me up on Twitter, I guess. Crystal Coconut. Um, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else right. to say. Sorry. No, that's fine. Thank you very much, Crystal.